So at this stage, uh, we have performed the analysis for gravity, the model analysis. Uh, we have defined the model and we use these two auxiliary files um, to run in OpenSys. And this last file was used for um, defining the section. Now we're going to add two more files. The first one is the analysis for pushover and the second one is uh, uh, similar to these two. It's uh, just a, a file that puts the model and the analysis together. Now uh, I'm going to open this one first. So start again by uh, putting just uh, some, some text uh, as an output in the OpenSys. Uh, then I'm going to define the recorders. In this case, I am interested first in the global behavior of the structure, for example. Um, so I'm going to set a recorder for the node uh, to give me the reactions of the two nodes in the base, as well as a recorder for nodes to give me the displacements uh, at the first and second stories. All of them will contain the time. In this case, for the pushover, um, the time uh it's uh, i mean it's not a real time because the pushover uh, doesn't depend on on a time it's again uh based on 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 steps now unlike the other gravity analysis the pushover analysis is a displacement based analysis uh so this will change um, a little bit now i will also set some recorders to know the behavior of elements not only the nodes. For example, I want the forces in elements 7, 8, 9 and 10. Uh, I want the deformation in elements 7, 8, 9 and 10. These are two different ways to say exactly the same. L7, 8, 9, 10 or L range 7 to 10. And I will do the same with the, with the columns. This is obviously for the plastic hinges. These are the elements that represent the plastic hinges and these are the elements that represent the columns. So I'm going to get the forces and core uh, rotation in the columns. Um, here I'm going to also set uh, this that is only uh, a variable that will help me to track the amount of time that it takes to run the analysis because sometimes the analysis might take uh, a considerable amount of time. Um, so I often put this in my, in my files. I'm going to define uh, first the lateral load case. Now, this is again a displacement based um, uh, analysis. It's not a force based analysis. So these forces in reality are just a pattern. They don't really uh, tell me how much force will be applied to my, to my building. So uh, I'm going to use here the distribution of forces uh, that is required by Eurocode 8 part one. Um, one of them, and there are many, but one of them that says that uh, the first mode, uh, the first mode shape multiplied or propor in proportion with also the mass uh, is going to be uh, the lateral load pattern that we will apply to this building. So basically here I copied the values from the first uh, mode for the first story and the second story. I got these ones from the model analysis. I just copy pasted them. Uh, you can also do it automatically. You can have it read by the software or if you're using, for example, MATLAB, MATLAB can read it and then you can write these variables automatically as well, which is what I normally do. Uh, now I'm going to create another pattern of loads. In this case, I don't know if you remember, but in gravity, we use pattern one. We're going to use pattern two in this case, so it doesn't give us an error, but we're still using the time series one. Uh, I'm going to apply the load in A1, B1. That will be uh, proportional to mass one, phi one. And in A2, B2, mass two, phi two. Um, this is all in the horizontal direction, as you can see, because in the vertical direction, and in rotation, the values are zero. Uh, once the loads are set, or the load patterns, I'm going to define uh, the size of the steps and the number of the steps that I want in my analysis. Uh, these two values will basically tell me, or will basically define 
how much I'm going to push my structure. So if I multiply 5,000 uh, by 1 times 10 to the minus 4, I will get 0 0.5. Since I'm working with meters, this means that the final displacement of my building will be 0 0.5 meters. Um, obviously this value is important because if you push it too much, depending on the materials that you're using, you might find that uh, your building doesn't converge anymore. This is basically because the, some of the forces uh, went to zero or, uh, or the stiffness went to zero, which means that the building is no longer able to sustain this load. So be careful with these values depending uh, if it doesn't converge, sometimes it's a good, a good uh, uh, approach to change them, probably to make this one smaller when the, when the building is very stiff, like for example in a in field building, you might reduce this value and increase this one, so you have more refined steps. In some materials it might actually uh, be uh, counter, uh, it might be the opposite, I mean, because if you make it very small, some of the algorithms that the materials follow might think that there is a, a, a reversal of stresses, which means that it will reduce the capacity, so it will change depending on each case. Um, now, all these values, I'm not going to go in depth uh, with any of this, uh, just the convergence test. I recommend you not to make it any bigger than this, uh, because otherwise you might get uh, values that are not realistic. Um, this is the number of iterations. Um, it's similar to the one in, in gravity. Um, now, an important parameter that you have to set here is, since it's a displacement control uh, test uh, analysis, we're going to decide where we're going to measure the displacement. So in this case, the displacement will be measured in the node A2. So when the node A2 uh, reaches a deformation of 50 centimeters, then the analysis will stop. Um, and then I will just analyze how many times, as many steps as I have, so 5,000 times in this case, and that's it. I get my pushover. Let's see how it works. So again, I'm going to create this file. Just there's a slight difference here because when I'm going to do my pushover, I want the gravity the gravity forces to be applied first. So I want the the gravity analysis first, uh, and then I also want the pushover analysis to be done. So in this case, I'm going to add the gravity analysis here in the middle. So I want to load my model. I want to do the gravity analysis. And once my gravity loads are applied, I want to start pushing my building on the side. So again, the procedure is similar. I go to OpenSys um, and I write source run pushover, in this case, dot TCL. Uh, it's running, actually, yeah, finished, two seconds, and I have my results here. As you can see, I have my recorders. First, I have my recorders from the gravity because I run the gravity analysis as well, so they are there. Uh, I want you to notice that this is the lateral load here is 7.4924, uh, because if I do the same, if I get the horizontal reactions, this, for example, this recorder is only giving me the horizontal reactions, not all of the reactions. So you will notice that the first value of my pushover is actually the gravity value, which means that the gravity loads were applied uh, in advance. Um, so I'm getting also the story displacement. So the time and the two nodes, first node and second node representing one story and the second story, and the ones that are uh, for local effects in the elements, the beam hinges, the column. I could have monitored the beams as well. I decided not to do it in this case, uh, but well, that's up to you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, for example, uh, copy these values. Oops. I'm going to copy these values into an Excel file. Again, this is a text value. I want it to be numbers spaced by this. Okay, so just to remember, what I have just copied uh, was the horizontal reactions. 
which means that this is the time uh, this is the reaction horizontal reaction in uh, the node A and this is a reaction in node B so in reality I want the sum of these two I'm going to do the negative sum because the reactions are going to the left and I want them to go I want my curve to go uh, above not below so as you can see the first one is zero because there is no lateral force uh, so the sum of the two reactions is zero and then it starts increasing I will do the same uh, with my story displacements so I'm going to select them all uh, and I'm going to I, I want you to notice by the way that the last ones are very close to 0.5 actually uh, 0.500106 it almost reached exactly the number uh, so at this point the test has uh, passed this number so it's running uh, up to that point I import again and there we go in this case I have the time and as you can see the time in this column and the time in this column are exactly the same uh, so this is exactly the same step horizontally uh, this is the displacement in the first story this is the displacement in the second story now if you want um, to plot the pushover curve for example uh, you can simply do it in Excel uh, in this case I'm going to plot um, the second story displacement that was my control at the end versus the base shear so it should look something like this so this is my pushover curve uh, and then well you can do whatever you need with it in this case you can see the maximum capacity and the maximum displacement depends on the pushover um, just as an additional comment um, if you work with the elements rather than with the nodes for example when we're talking about uh, an element that has a length like for example a column um, you will notice that when I check the forces I get way more uh, columns than I get with the nodes let me show you Uh, so in total I'm having um, 25 columns uh, so in reality I have the first one that is time and then I have I don't know if you remember four columns so the first six represent the forces in column one so since this is a two-dimensional problem I have three forces in one end three forces in the other end and as you can see this is the horizontal force this is the vertical force and this is the rotation since I am getting or recording global forces this means that these are given in uh, global coordinates so this is directly the value of force uh, in the column um, in the case of displacements in this case core rotation if I select them uh, I have less values as you can see I have the value of time that is the first column and then in total I have um, 13 columns uh, however I had only um, four I mean 13 Excel columns and I had only four uh, structural columns which means that three of these each three of these represent uh, different values of of deformation depending on on which column so basically it's three different rotation types on each uh, element um, in this case the one we care about is the one in the middle um, so if, for example if we plot let's copy this value to my uh, a new sheet I will also copy the values of force in this case uh, the force that I care about is the moment because that's the one that is going to cause the rotation um, I 
I can also plot, um, for example, in this case, if somehow useful for you, you can plot um, the displacements, in this case, rotation in the column, the core rotation, sorry. Uh, by the way, this is given in radians automatically versus uh, the moment applied on the column. And you can see actually here that the column actually had a um, um, some yielding and that explains the shape of the of the uh, pushover curve. You can do the same with the beam hinges, like for example this one. This one we copy beam hinge global forces. So when we paste it again, we order it. And as you can see, well, there are many zeros. So this is the value that we need actually. Um, in total, I have 25. So it's similar to the columns. Each six of them represent one end of the rotational spring. So I have a moment of 54 in this spring. I have a moment of 54 in this spring and I have a moment of 49 and 49 in these two springs at the beginning and they will change. You can also do the same uh, with the deformation. In this case, the deformation is easier because it will show you only the, only the deformation in the direction of, of the spring, which means that in total we will get only five columns. Each of the columns represents the deformation in one of the springs. Um, this is everything for the push over analysis.